Suzuki Vidhari Review. This fascinating, ever-changing, new car market of ours loves to confound and surprise. Its sand shift and class boundaries expand and contract all the time, somehow rarely leaving the car makers you expect to reap the benefit. Suzuki is a case in point, a maker with almost half a century of experience in making small 4x4s that's only now getting around to taking a proper swing at the Skoda Yetas, Dacia Dusters and Vauxhall Machas of this world. Go figure. Suzuki's entrant looks and sounds familiar but is different from any car wearing its nameplate before. Welcome, then, to the new Vitara. This new groove compact SUV is related by platform to the SX4S Cross crossover launched in 2013. The sister cars are quite cleverly differentiated, though. Whereas the SX4's ruggedness is like that of a pair of Gore-Tex running shoes, the Vitara's is more of a hiking boot. Upright, square-cornered and with plenty of air inside its wheel arches, the Vitara goes after the more high-rised, genuinely dual-purpose offerings among the new breed of super mini-based SUVs. That said, anyone trading into this car from its nearest recent antecedent in Suzuki's range, the three-door, sub-4.0-meter Grand Vitara, may be in for something of a shock. That predecessor was 1.7 meters tall and, with what Suzuki called a built-in ladder frame chassis, approaching 1.5 tons in weight. It was an old-school 4x4 with a low-range transfer box and a 2.4-liter engine. This Vitara is lower, lighter and less powerful, the result of a modern, rebalanced approach to the kind of added capability design currently surging up the European sales charts. Suzuki's specific expertise in making small cars on the one hand and SUVs on the other stands to give it a decisive advantage with this car. Let's find out if it actually has. Contrary to what its more assertive SUV styling may suggest, the Vitara slots into Suzuki's showroom range below the S-Cross, on price and on overall length. It's reasonable to assume that a larger grand version will book in that position at some point soon taking the fight to the likes of the Mazda CX-5 and Ford Kuga. But even without backup from a bigger brother, the normal Vitara could certainly hold its own among its burgeoning competitor set, being longer and taller than both a Renault Capture and Nissan's popular Juke. The Vitara's stylistic reference is to the 1988 original come thick and fast when you run your eye from nose to tail. The obvious ones are the shape of the headlights and the rising feature lines on its flanks. Look harder and you'll clock the clamshell bonnet and front wing vents as visual homage, too. What matters most is that Suzuki has penned a distinctive, sturdy, modern-looking design here, one with a more amiable and straightforward visual identity than plenty of its rivals. The Vitara model range is slightly truncated by Suzuki's normal standards, featuring only SZ4, FZT, SZ5 and sporty S trim levels our test car being an SZ5 model. But options to customize the car's look are greater than Suzuki owners are used to. Several two-tone color schemes are offered, with body and roof in contrasting paint, and you can also dress up your Vitara with special grille treatments and wheel arch garnishes, or with an urban or rugged accessory pack. The urban pack gets you chrome fog light bezels and a roof spoiler and the rugged pack buys front and rear skid plates and extended body side moldings. The body in white and suspension come adapted from service in the S-Cross. Ultra-high strength steel in the body structure adds rigidity without extra weight. Revised lower arms, subframes and struts shore up the front axle and a U-shaped torsion beam suspension features at the rear. Engines, meanwhile, are limited to a 1.6-liter normally aspirated petrol or a disturbedzel, both peaking at 118 bhp, and a turbocharged 1.4-liter booster jet engine producing 138 bhp but is only available with the Vitara S. The petrol is the cheaper of the two when fitted with a 5-speed manual gearbox and front-wheel drive as standard, and as tested, but it is also available with four-wheel drive and with a six-speed torque converter automatic gearbox, either separately or together. The diesel is limited to a manual transmission, albeit with six speeds, but it comes in front drive and all PAW formats.
The Vitara S is the only petrol model to offer six-speed versions of the manual or automatic gearbox and only four-wheel drive form. Few rivals offer as much flexibility on engine, gearbox and drivetrain permutation. And even fewer do it while imposing such a negligible weight penalty as the Vitara. On our scales, the car weighed just 1,124 kilograms against a claim of 1,075 kg and a class average that's more like 1,250 kg. Impressive stuff. Introduction design and styling interior performance ride and handling MPG and running costs verdict prices and specs. The Suzuki Vitara 1.6 SZ5 The replacement for the original rugged, off-roader Suzuki Vitara. Suzuki Vitara tipped our scales at 1,124 kg, against a class average of 1,250 kg. The 18,000-pound Suzuki Vitara comes fitted with LED headlights as standard. This is the only 18,000 pounds car we can think of with LED headlights as standard. The mid-spec Suzuki Vitara comes with 17 in alloys, with polished versions saved for the top-spec models. Upward curving swage line looks exaggerated on a car that's otherwise so straight edged. The Suzuki Vitara's rear light cluster. Silver faux skid plates are fitted to all trim levels. But with the rugged pack, they're replaced by real, protective skid plates. The dual sunroof gives the Suzuki Vitara more space and light. Silver roof rails appear on all models but strike a much greater contrast against the black or white roof of a two tone car. The view from the driver's seat in the Suzuki Vitara. Visibility is pretty standard for a small crossover, but higher and better than in a normal Super Mini. A closer look at the front seats and dashboard of the Suzuki Vitara. Front seats are very comfortable, but all that budget plastic does take the edge off the cabin. The rear seats in the Suzuki Vitara. Back row offers decent leg room but limited headroom for full sized adults. A view of the flexibility of the Suzuki Vitara's seating and its spacious boot. Adjustable floor means there's no loading lip to negotiate. Boot capacity is 375 liters, slotting between a Nissan Juke and Skoda Yeti. A close-up of the Suzuki's infotainment system. Vitara's infotainment system is very good. Menu systems are easy to understand and the touchscreen is commendably sharp. The climate control switch gear of the Suzuki Vitara. These controls win the testers award for clarity and simplicity, although some rivals benefit from dual zone climate control and range topping form. The low curb weight of the Suzuki Vitara enables brisk progress and competent dynamics. The 1.6 liter petrol variant is quicker than Suzuki's performance figures suggest. The Suzuki Vitara judges the compromise between handling and comfort well. Vitara's low curb weight enables brisk progress and competent dynamics. With the Suzuki Vitara regulating the body roll nicely. The compromise between handling and comfort in particular is well judged. Body roll is nicely regulated. The 3.5 star Suzuki Vitara. The Vitara is solidly built in Suzuki's image, and that's fine with us. The Suzuki Vitara 1.6 SZ5 The replacement for the original rugged. Off-roader Suzuki Vitara The 18,000-pound Suzuki Vitara comes fitted with LED headlights as standard The mid-spec Suzuki Vitara comes with 17 in alloys, with polished versions saved for the top-spec models The Suzuki Vitara's rear light cluster The dual sunroof gives the Suzuki Vitara more space and light The view from the driver's seat in the Suzuki Vitara Closer look at the front seats and dashboard of the Suzuki Vitara The rear seats in the Suzuki Vitara View of the flexibility of the Suzuki Vitara's seat and its spacious boot a close-up of the Suzuki's infotainment system the climate control switch gear of the Suzuki Vitara the low curb weight of the Suzuki Vitara enables brisk progress and competent dynamics the Suzuki Vitara judges the compromise between handling and comfort well with the Suzuki Vitara regulating the body roll nicely the 3.5 star Suzuki Vitara buyers get a choice of three engines to propel the Vitara two are 1.6 liter units with one burning diesel and the other petrol. No matter which motor you opt for, both develop 118 bhp, 
while the diesel benefits from a hefty torque advantage of 236 pounds foot at 1750 revolutions per minute to the petrol's 115 pounds foot at 4400 revolutions per minute while the 1.4 liter booster jet engine produces a princely 138 bhp and 162 pounds foot but Suzuki has also increased the pressure of the fuel injection system and tweaked the turbocharger to keep the wastegate closed to reduce the amount of lag when jumping back on the throttle. Petrol power probably isn't most people's idea of a natural fit for a compact crossover, even more so when you consider that the Vitara's 1.6-liter M16A motor comes without the functional benefits of a turbocharger, but the usual advantages still apply. If your average mileage requirements are modest, then a diesel unit isn't necessarily mandatory. It helps in the Vitara's case that the engine isn't required to haul around a particularly onerous amount of weight. The car doesn't feel nearly as flat-footed as it might were at carrying an industry standard mass. By keeping a goodly amount from the scales, Suzuki has ensured that there's sufficient tractability for the new model to feel amenable in the real world. It also when full of fuel and half filled with road testers, did considerably better at getting to the national limit than Suzuki claimed it would, knocking a full 2.0 seconds from the 11.5 seconds quote. At 9.5 seconds, that makes the Vitara if not exactly quick then at the very least enthusiastic in a way that we, and surely very few of its prospective buyers, expected. That said, with a different variant of this engine being previously shared with the Swift Sport, Perhaps we shouldn't have been surprised. Certainly, the four-cylinder unit delivers its power in much the same way, remaining earnest even beyond the 6,000 revolutions per minute at which its 118 bhp peak is produced. On the road, the 1.6-liter D16A diesel motor impresses with strong torque off the mark and pleasing mid-range acceleration. It's quite a vocal unit, even at idle, but settles down when working and supports high overall gearing so its note disappears at a motorway cruise. The petrol variant only comes paired with a 5-speed manual gearbox, while the diesel gets a 6-speeder, which has a light, short throw. However, the 5-speed manual doesn't possess quite the positive shift action that we'd like or the refinement that would prevent you from hearing every element of the process. Road and wind noise are not that well contained, but the Vitara is no worse in this respect than anything else in this class. This class.